Hello, everybody. <clears throat> now, I've been really looking forward to talking about the visionary state experiences that I've had growing up. And before doing that, I really wanted to give some clarity on what I'm going to share. And up to this point, I've made a few videos bringing it up and, and, talk, and talk a little bit about what's been happening and how it works a little bit. Now, um, before I get into this, I gotta warn you that for some reason when I talk about this stuff, it really makes people angry at me and it makes people not like me. But I'm gonna go ahead and share about it anyways because I do think it's very interesting and um, that I'm at a place in my life now where I have so much more clarity. I think I um, have a pretty good idea of what's been going on like um, in previous uh, videos. I've spoken a little bit about um, the parallel dimensional time travel and how that works and I've talked a little bit about why uh, Bill Lee might have been a character in my visions. And, um, and so I think there's a very good reason this is happening. But what you got to understand is the way these visions are set up is so that part of them are true and part of them are not true. And I think that is meant deliberately to cause all the interactions that we've been having and to challenge us with this. So it's been very challenging for me because um, I've had to kind of figure out that it was happening. But before I could figure out exactly what was happening, I went and got into trouble because um, I was given information that made me want to contact Bill Lieb. And so when I went to uh, meet him, it turned into a total nightmare for me. And um, and at, at, ever since that's happened, I've been just totally baffled. You know, why would um, I would have all this like really cool visionary state stuff happen just to send me someplace where I'm not wanted? So... That um that really brought hardship on me for many, many years. In fact, I still feel like um I'm trying to get through it. I'm still trying to get over it, and I still don't understand 100% what it's about. But I think I got a pretty good idea that it, it might be a part of my spiritual training, that they there may be uh, some kind of subconscious activity. Now, I talked about earlier when you're uh, clairvoyant, you're able to pick up information from everywhere now question I've had is, is just my subconscious throwing together these narratives or are there otherworldly beings? Is this how extraterrestrials communicate? You know, kind of like that one movie where Jodie Foster uh, went into the parallel timeline and she met her father. Well, maybe I'm doing the same thing. I'm going into the parallel timeline and talking to Billy and it's not really Bill Lieb. So, you know, I want to clarify that um, Bill Lieb is not accountable for anything that Billy does in my visions because he's really just... um more of a projection. So when you're in the visionary state, it's a projection of reality and it's just like reality. And so you got to forgive me. Like I'm not vulnerable and I'm not stupid. The way this works, that's why I call it a visionary slip. It's like it just slips this little bit of time into your timeline and you think it's just part of your regular day. So I grew up thinking that Billy was a real person and um, I thought that Rosie and Howard were my mom's friends. And then when I turned 18, um, my father came back to my room and he handed me this magazine with a picture of Billy on the front. And he said, hey, isn't that your little friend from down the street? And so th I clipped out this picture of Bill just for that reason. I've had that magazine all these years and I think the magazine was falling apart. And I thought I'd save that picture because it's just such a nice picture of Bill Lieb that's just um, kind of my experience, because I'm a, a Frontline Assembly fan from the 80s, so that's how I imagine Bill Lieb. And um, I just thought that was a nice little picture frame to keep him in as well. But there he is, you know, like during that period of my life, I was listening to a lot of his music. Um, and so by the time I got into high school, I think I was catching on more and more and starting to like him more and more. I was really hooked on New Order. Like all I could think about was New Order. And then my dad handed me this magazine and said, hey, that your little friend from down the street now? He didn't really say that. That was a visionary slip. Now, at that point, I realized, well, that could be Bill. I mean, I could remember him telling me that, you know, someday he will be a famous rock star known as Bill Lieb and that his band will be called Frontline Assembly and it's going to be electronic music. Well, that was 1982. I was six years old and he was like an eight-year-old kid talking to me. Well, in 1987, my dad wrote to Bushido. I really liked their music. There was this one particular song. And it had a sample of somebody going, I like the way you said that. 
has a nice tone. Remember that song? Anyways, I really like that song. It had a good techno sound to it. So I loved everything that has a techno sound to it. And they were, that was a particularly techno-y sounding song. And, um, and so my dad was like, Jody, do you even know what Bushido means? I'm like, not really. And he thought, well, it's kind of funny because I was thinking about getting into the, you know, I really wanted to learn music and I wanted to learn martial arts and he put it together. He's like, hey, that's really neat. So he wrote the guy and told him about me and they wrote back. The guy Gary, Gary Levermore had a record company called Third Mind Records and they had just signed Frontline Assembly to their label. So he wanted to recommend them to us. So this is the first time we've ever heard of Frontline Assembly. And my dad really liked it. You know, he went out and found the music um, and it's like, oh, hell yeah, we're definitely interested in this band. I liked it and it grew on me more and more and more. But then when this happened, this is when I really started to become interested in who Bill Lieb is. And so, you know, it, it's turned into an embarrassing uh, scenario for me because I feel like, you know, like my dad kind of, you know, teases me and, and it's like, oh, you're just so infatuated with believe, you know, and other people are like, why are you obsessing over this man? And, you know, it's like, you know, it's like Jody believe does not care about you. And Jody, you know, believe could do way better than you. I mean, you got to understand, like, believe has like several you know, beautiful women, they're all rich, they all have good jobs, college education, you know, why would you, why would he be interested in somebody like you? And besides, you know, um, he's married anyway, so, um, well, <laughs> well, who knows, maybe he's a kindred spirit, and regardless of all my shortcomings, you know, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, I gave him a chance to meet me, and, and there's just... It's it's really confusing. It's almost like um you know maybe he likes me but he's not allowed to so it's it's just not a socially acceptable thing for him to um be seen talking to me or I don't know so I'm not really sure you know so I don't wanna I don't wanna kid myself and think hey well the guy likes me but he he just can't talk to me because it looks bad and then there's also the thought that well maybe he hates me he hates me. And so I'm being rejected. But, you know, um, as long as I keep in mind that Billy and Bill Lieb are not the same person, that's what says, hey, don't take it personally. Um, you know, Bill Lieb may not have the same uh, memories and Bill Lieb may not even have, you know, like a visionary states. And he may not even have dreams. Some people just don't dream. Some people have no psychic awareness or whatever. So they don't understand what you're talking about. So that's fine. Billy's not doing anything wrong. Anyways, um, <clears throat> just saying that because um, it was a really hard thing for me to go through and it has made me so depressed. I've considered ending my life just because, you know, I'm just like, man, I'm just such an undesirable person and I'm crazy. You know, how am I going to get through life like this? I don't even know what's going on. You know, like I think all this stuff's going on and it's not because what I was experiencing was a little bit like psychosis or schizophrenia. Or something like that, you know, and so it took some time to put it together that it's not, it's not that simple. These are prophetic visions. I am going into a parallel dimensional timeline. And for some reason, they're showing me Bill Lieb. So like, he's not like the most important thing in the world. Like I don't obsess over other talking monkeys all that much. And I really dislike uh, the culture and where people are worshiping artists and musicians and celebrities and all that bullshit. And so I'm really not that kind of person. So, I mean, the only reason I would keep that picture is because um, Bill Leap is a very special reminder to me. It just, it just takes me back to, like, what I really care about. And I think, you know, like like my father, um, he's very passionate about music. He really loves music so much. And, um, and he's just such a big fan of music that he even went as far as to make his own music. And he just happened to be so good at it that he kept going and going. And, and thankfully, um, he did because he's made a lot of wonderful music. And so... Um, <clears throat> Um, as far as uh, any of the information, like, okay, I was being told I was going to grow up to marry Bill Lieb someday. Well, I highly doubt that's ever going to happen because he's married to somebody that he married, like, about 40 years ago. Now, they broke up for a while and they got back together, but I really feel like that's his true life partner. And um, and, and if you're a Frontline Assembly fan and, and you listen to Bill Lieb's music, you really have Carol Ann Lopke to thank for being such a good wife and being such a supportive um artist. Uh, she's also an artist, so she's an art lover, and she can see the, the beauty and the quality in what Bill Lieb is doing. And even if... She, I have a feeling, you know, like, Bill Lieb really cares about industrial music, and, and Carol Ann's a little bit more impartial, but she enjoys it nonetheless. 
um, kind of like my mom is, you know, like she, she, when she, my dad broke up, she says, you know what? I really miss listening to Skinny Puppy and Frontline Assembly and all that stuff, but she wouldn't normally go out of her way for that. And so, you know, I think, um, you know, I'm, I probably care more about industrial music and stuff than she does, but, uh, that's besides the point. I think that, um, it takes a special person to care about a guy like Bill Lieb and then and that's what makes Carol Ann so special. And, uh, you know, and if those two, uh, were interested in staying in touch with me and being friends, Either one of them are more than welcome to, to know me for as long as we live. So I want you guys to know um, I do love Bill Lieb very much and I love his wife. And I just want to give them both like a big giant hug and just have like a big triple hug together with them if I ever see them again. So like um, no hard feelings. Um, it's all water under the bridge. But I'm going to go ahead and tell the story. And I'm going to try to keep it minimal. Um, and I don't want you to feel like I'm talking shit or, 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 or trying to stir the pot or, or you know start a fight. I'm just sharing what happened to me. And I think that I'm a genuinely honest person. I might be a little dingy and absent-minded, but I do have some good clarity on what's been going on here. And I think it's fun to talk about. And I, and I, um, so anyways, I look forward to telling you guys the rest of my story. So hang in there and I'll make more videos. It could take a long time for me to finish. So, um, just bear with me. I could make, uh, very, very many videos only because they have to be short. So I'll try to Try to hit one point at a time and move on. And I hope you guys enjoy our story. Or I hope you guys enjoy my story. And, uh, and, um, and, and I really kind of hope, um, <clears throat> that in the long run that, uh, you know, Bill Leap and I can be good friends and that we're comfortable talking to each other. And, and if I ever figure out how to use my goddamn, uh, computer, um, I'll start writing music. And eventually, hopefully, if, um, if Bill Leap survives long enough for me to get that far along. I do really hope me and him work together on at least one good song and do something fun together. Hugs, hugs, hugs. We got a chance to do something fun. Um, you know, anyways, that's what I would hope for. And I, and I really don't expect anything otherwise. So I appreciate everybody for, for bearing with me, listening to me. And especially if you enjoy my conversation, you take care and I'll talk to you soon.